Hi guys, let's do some masking. Um, first, if you've never used, you know, the brush, the linear, or the radial, if you've literally never used masking before at all, um, I'm not going to go through the, the like the super duper basics. So I would suggest going to YouTube and just finding a real basic tutorial. Um, what I do want to do is show you guys what I have spent a couple of months figuring out. Um, I have watched some of the, the, you know, new update masking tutorials and I've found them hard to follow or just, you know, I don't know, just not my learning style. So, um, yeah, I want to just walk you guys through some of the really neat um, things you can do, like intersect masks and um, invert the subject to get the background and stuff like that. So um, I'll try not to make it too, you know, verbose, like I'll try to make it kind of kind of quick, but I do want to be comprehensive and really show you how to use these tools. So let's start with this. This is my mama. And we're just going to one click it here. And that looks good. So what I want to do is select just her skin tone. Um, let's actually bring this down a little bit. And I'm just going to select her skin tone, okay? Everybody knows, I think, that you can select the subject and you can select the sky with one click. Those are really cool, but there's more you can do. So instead of selecting the subject, um, I'm going to do it even quicker to select your skin. Whoops, I didn't mean to click off. I am going to use a brush, okay? And I think what we're going to do is soften her skin, okay? And the old way, I would zoom in, I would take a brush, I would pull down texture and clarity, and I would paint it in, you know, painstakingly, and it would take a long time. And if you're doing that with 20 photos, you know, it can get really overwhelming. This is the quicker way with intersecting masks. So I've just created a brush here, and I'm just going to brush over, you know, not carefully at all. Just going to pop that over her. You can always click this little lower left box to make sure that you've got it all, and yes, I do. So here's intersecting masks. It's super easy. I'm going to right click intersect mask with color range. So what I want you to do instead of intersect mask, I want you to think of it as work within this mask. Um, I think that's a little easier to understand and I wish that um, Lightroom had gave it that name instead. You know, work within this mask is is what you want to think of it as. Um, and I know, I, you know, everybody knows what intersect means, but um, when I first heard about it, and, and I'm not stupid, you know, I have a decent vocabulary, but when I first heard intersecting masks, I was like, nope, no thanks. Like, that doesn't sound like something I want to learn, but it's so easy. So go to your brush box, click intersect mask with color range, okay? And I'm just going to click on her skin. Look at that. It literally just selected her skin. So let's take off our overlay. Now I'm going to soften her skin. And I'm just going to pull down the texture and the clarity. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of exposure, too. Yep. Um, I also like lifting blacks on skin just a touch, like literally, you know, four or five or so. Um, but now what I want to do is make sure that none of that got on her eyes, her mouth, um, you know, anything that I don't want to be softened. So I'm going to come back up to my mask and click on it. Let's get this overlay off. Um, and I'm, you know, always remember that you're just working your way down, okay? So you're starting with your brush or your radial. You're working down to an intersecting mask. And then to refine it, you're still working your way down. So you're going to work your way down to subtract. And just think of subtract as the erase button, all right? So we're clicking erase. And you can erase with a radial or whatever, but I prefer to erase with a brush. It gives you a little bit more control. So I'm taking that brush and I'm going to make it small. You know, there's no need to zoom in or anything like that because this is already really precise. I just want to, you know, be doubly sure. So I'm just going to quickly <clears throat> take that subtract brush and brush over her details. And that's that. I've softened her skin um, in, you know, 20 seconds if I hadn't been explaining it. Um, yeah, I think that is just the coolest feature. Um, let's do, let's see, what should we do now? Let's do an intersecting mask and change the depth of this chair. So if you want to make a new mask, come up to the addition button here. And let's do a radial gradient this time. And um, anytime I'm using a radial as my initial mask before 
working within the mask, I bring my feather all the way down. I feel like I can get better accuracy that way. I would never use like a radial without a feather, you know, for anything else but intersecting masks. So, um, okay, so there we go. There's my initial mask. And let's say I want to dehaze that chair for some reason. I, I wouldn't, but let's just pretend. I'm going to come to that mask, wor intersect mask with, so I want to work within that mask, and I'm going to click color range. You can also do luminance range if there's a huge difference in luminance between whatever you want to work on and everything else, but I find that color range usually works best. So I'm going to click it, click the chair, and you can see um, this uh, color range here, if I hover over it, it's showing me everything else in the photo that w has the same color range, okay? Now, because we're using an intersecting mask, or, you know, again, we're just working within our initial radial filter, none of that other stuff will be affected. So I'll show you. Let's get our overlay off. And maybe I want to dehaze this chair. See how accurate that is? Look at that, you guys. I mean, come on now. That's crazy. This is so useful if you have a really underexposed photo and you want to bring out the human beings. I will show you that in a minute here. Um, yeah, it just, these intersecting masks are like the best, the best, the best. Um, okay, so I think that's probably it for skin smoothing, but that's how I do it. Let's go to another photo and work on the background because I want I don't think um, that working on the background is like, super obvious you know it take, takes a second okay so let's expose this and I'm gonna use this one because the last time I did a live like edit with me video I mentioned that if I had had time I would have used my make it pop brush over the girl just to pop her a little bit but I'm gonna show you another way so let's put O2 and we're gonna give her some life in her skin I always zoom in to adjust the warmth um, because I just want to focus on the skin tone. Okay, so let's bring that down. And actually, here's, here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to expose for the girl. And there we go. She looks good like that. But now my background is, you know, not how I want it to be. I would like to bring out that sunset a little bit more. And I would like for the you know, environment to be a little bit more um, in focus. So let's come up to masking and select our subject. This sometimes takes a minute, but it is incredibly accurate. So I think it deserves a minute. Um, okay. All right, now our subject is selected. It's this easy, you guys, to select the background. See this? Invert, invert. Now all we're working on is the background. Look at this. We can bring down, oh, come on, my computer's laggy. We can bring down, come on, bring down the exposure. We can dehaze it. I mean, anything you want to do on that background. And look how nicely exposed she stayed. Ah, oh, I love it. Um, you know, another thing you can do, obviously, after you've inverted the background and worked on that, select the sky and work on that, too. I mean, really, Lightroom did some amazing things with this update. Which is, again, why I think it's crazy that um, we still have to manually import our brushes. Like, what the heck, you know? Obviously, they're capable. They just don't care. Uh, all right, so let's dehaze our sky just a touch. Um, and I want to say, can people stop doing this? Come on. Like, no. I, I know it's a fun tool, but don't, don't do this. Like, we've all seen this. <laughs> you know, don't do that, okay? Um, my rule of thumb is always to do a little bit less than I think I should. <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody. If you like those skies, I'm, I'm just kidding. It still looks good. All right, so, all right, that looks beautiful. And yeah, so that's how you select the background. Um, let's say we want to just select her guitar. How are we going to do that? Let's make a new mask for the subject because it will select her guitar. And I'll show you how to do that part. So I hope that makes sense with intersecting masks. You know, just think of it as um, working within a mask. Um, so let's get that overlay off. And I want to intersect this mask, which is just the girl, with a color range. And let's see what it selects. Yep, 
it pretty much just selected her guitar. Now you can come down to refine, pull that down, and get it even more accurate. Okay? So now we, let's click off the overlay. Now we just have that guitar isolated. Say I want to make it brighter. Or maybe I want to give it a little clarity. Maybe I really want it to pop and put some texture in it. I don't. I don't want to do that. But maybe I did. Look at that. Look at that, you guys. This stuff just fascinates me. You can pull up the highlights. I mean, gosh, I don't know, man. This stuff is amazing. Um, so I think that probably explains intersecting masks. Um, let's do it on a radial gradient just so you can see. So let's say I, I, I wouldn't, obviously, but what if I just want to select that patch of greenery? How can we do it? Let's intersect the mask with a color range. And yeah, I mean, that didn't do a bad job. But if we refine it down a little bit further, I've pretty much just got those selected now, right? So let's see. Yeah, that didn't do a great job. But I'll show you again. All you really have to do is work your way down within that mask. Click subtract. Erase with your brush, and let's make it real obvious again. And just erase. Again, this is kind of a stupid, um, you know, uh, example because no one would ever do that. But just just to show you how it works. So let's delete that mask. I don't like that. And let's do one more. Let's see. What else do we do? Let's go to this one. And I've already edited this one. Um, if you want to see me edit and you have not, I do have um, an edit with me video up that just goes through all these photos and, and you know how I would edit them with Reverie and Oak. So let's say I just want to bring down the exposure on um, this brick here. So oop, I was already unmasking. So I'm going to use a linear gradient. Select that. And let's intersect intersect our mask with the color range again. Boom. Look at that. So <clears throat> again, I want to show you the difference between intersecting a mask and just using color range. If you hover over it, it will show you everything that has the same color range. Um, you know, it's only going to work on this part though because we've intersected our mask. So, you know, there you go. I mean, you can really just with crazy accuracy um, edit your images these way <laughs> these way this way <laughs> it's been a long day and I have a wedding tomorrow so I've had a lot of prep and stuff to do and you know you know stuff like that um, let me show I know that charity had asked um, sort of just generally and and that's it for intersecting masks you know you can click off if that's what you're interested in um, but that's how I um, isolate the skin tones and isolate anything, you know, change different um, parts of of, uh, of an image, you know, easily and, and pinpoint them easily. So I'm going to go over now um, the way that I use my brushes. And I'm going to do this for the couple of people that asked for a little brush tutorial specifically on that. So let's go ahead and reduce this exposure. And let's pretend we're using the Make It Pop brush because I do like to use that on my subjects. Um, okay come up and click masking and we're going to use a radial filter and we're going to make sure that our feather is all the way up um, and I like to put the midpoint right around sort of their faces or whatever the focal point is and bring it in from there so let me get off this overlay I would use the make it pop just about like that and you know you can just pretend that that's what it is but that's how I use that brush and then let me show you how to use the Sunset Glow brush too and how I typically use it. So, um, oh, I hate these stupid things, you guys. Um, there is a lot of times when, you know, it's not very pretty in Michigan and, oh, come on. Sorry. <laughs> I literally, can someone tell me how to block those pop-ups? Like, leave it in the comments because they terrorize me. Um, anyway, so I live in Michigan where, you know, Things are just not very sunny out, and I rarely will get a beautiful sunset. So um, that's why I made that brush initially, was to help sort of give some um, believable, realistic light to my images. So this is how I use it. Um, 
let's actually bring this exposure down a little so you can see a little better. And I'm just going to use a brush so that I don't have to reveal like the actual brush settings, but I would use the Sunset Pop brush like this. Oh, wait a minute. Coming up here. I'm just going to show exposure so that you can see exactly where I would brush it. I would maybe brush it just on the edges of things where it maybe faded out a little bit more here. You know, the bigger you make your brush, the more faded you can get it around the edges. Um, just to give a little bit of light and um, color to, you know, and, and make sure your brushes are feathered. A um, little bit of color to the uh, background and just sort of pop the environment. Um, so I would do that or erase that. Sometimes I'll also just use it as a radial filter, um, depending on you know the scene. But let's again ex increase our exposure so you can see where I would put the Sunset Glow brush. Just about like that. And the other thing I want to say about the brushes is don't leave them exactly as is. Brushes are always a starting point. Um, kind of like people use presets. They apply a preset and then they tweak everything. Brushes, I think it's important to, um, you don't have to make a whole new brush out of it. But any slider that I have activated um, or that I have moved, move it. Move it up and down just a little bit to see where you want it. Um, very rarely will I not tweak my brushes. Um, but I ha I mean, you know, the benefit of the brushes is that I've activated the sliders for you that will give you the corresponding look. You know what I mean? That will give you the sunset look um, that you're going for. But make sure that you you know, adjust the exposure and things like that. You don't have to leave the brushes as is. Um, and like the orange skin shadow brush. I would come in, I would take my brush, would make sure that it's all the way feathered, okay? And get it real low. And then I would just, we'll use the exposure so you can see right where I'm brushing. And then I would just brush around those sort of hot shadows. Now, this looks garish obviously I'm just using this so you can see where I would brush it but I would brush it anywhere that has that deep sort of orange you know shadow like right around the hairline I'll get it a lot um, yeah and that just really softens and evens out the skin um, and then let's see for the um, let's see if we can find where Marcus says are yes so with the eye brush Yep, with the one for eyes, the um, it, I always use it as a radial. I never use it as a brush. Let's pull up our exposure just for show. And I would just put it right about there. And again, this is not what the um, you know, eye radial looks like, but just so you can see where I'm putting it. And then, if you guys didn't catch this last time, you can duplicate this mask to make it quicker. So I'm going to duplicate that. And then I'm going to pull it over. And look two separate masks and if one eye is like in the shadows and I want to actually one eye is in the shadows um, and you want to brighten that one up just a little bit more you can do that now again you guys please don't think that I would ever brighten the eyes that much I'm just um, using exposure so you can see where I'm putting it um, but I think that's that's it um, is there anything else that I can show you let's Gosh, I, I, I honestly think, think that's about it. I feel like intersecting masks should be more difficult, but they're not. I mean, it really is that simple. And I encourage you guys to ask any questions. If, you know, something didn't make sense or whatever, please ask, and I will explain, or I will send you a video. Um, I've become famous for sending people videos in <laughs> through Messenger just to explain my point. But, uh, yeah, I think that ought to help or at least get you started. So... If you have any questions, let me know. And thank you guys so much for being here. You are all amazing. And have an awesome weekend. Bye.